Hi, my wise astrology tribe, Cosmic Inside Astrology. I am your co-pilot, Christina. Okay, let me check. I'm not sure if my audio is going over here. Uh, just a second. It seems like it's going. Okay. All right, yes, I'm recording. Okay, so I'm back today and actually I'm going to talk about the full moon lunar eclipse in Libra. And I'm sorry about that. I put that videos right now a little bit late, but I am really in agony because Saturn is transiting my sun back and forth and uh, it's giving me a lot of joint pain and I do have frozen shoulder and everything else like that. So, so I'm truly look like a mess right now. All right, so if you're new to my channel, please subscribe, like and share my videos and also comment below because any little comment helps me to get recognized by the algorithm and they're going to be more enthusiastic to actually create more videos for you. And, uh, you know, like together we can navigate through the good, the bad and the ugly. All right, so what is full moon and what is the lunar eclipse in Libra? So first of all, we going to actually, I would like to uh, start with um, a quote by Bob Marley, and that is the truth is everyone is going to hurt you. You just got to find the ones worth suffering for. So why did I choose that um, quote for you guys? Because of Libra rules relationship and Libra rules partnership. And the truth is it's about the we during this eclipse and because lunar eclipse usually it's a fated event and most of the time you know like something what is coming to an end it could represent like some of us or some of you going to end relationship in your life okay so let's see what's going on in astrology a full moon eclipse especially a total lunar eclipse symbolize a time of culmination release and re-evaluation, re -evaluation actually. So, you know, as I said because, before, the moon is representing your feelings. The moon is representing the way you are nurturing yourself or the way you were nurtured or you of the way you are nurturing your children. That is motherhood. That is the woman in general. That is client, uh, the public your dog and, uh, you know, your feelings, emotions. And this full moon, usually it's an eclipse. So it's an unexpected fated event, which is going to symbolize some kind of pivotal moment in our life with our emotions, with our desires. And, you know, usually during full moon eclipse, some kind of truth going to emerge. You know, it can bring in significant endings. That's why I was quoting Bob Merle over here. Some kind of transition, transformation in a relationship. And, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's good sometimes to end things because it's not necessarily going to bring in something bad because of if you are living in a bad relationship, it could bring in something which is like... Uh, a long time desired. So something which is a blessing ending could be as well. So um, I don't know if you know that, but you know, the lunar eclipse occurs when the earth's position itself directly between the sun and the moon. And it's going to create a shadow that blocks the sunlight from reaching the moon. Um, so it's only happening during full moon when the sun, earth and the moon align closely enough within the earth in the middle. There are multiple time, uh, kind of um, lunar eclipses. One is total, other is partial. And we have the penumbral lunar eclipse, which is this lunar eclipse going to be this kind which is more subtle and less noticeable than the total or partial eclipses. It happens actually when the moon phases through the earth uh, 
penumbral shadow, causing only a slight darkening of the moon. Often even hard to, to, to see that. So only through photographic images you can see. So that is not a total lunar eclipse, neither a partial one. Okay, so what does it do? As I said before, it's intense. It is significant life-changing events, dramatic shift. And, you know, it's going to bring in fated events in our life. And because of the moon represents your emotion. So the emotional intensity of those full moon eclipses are very, very, um, you know, like magnified. You're going to feel really sensitive, very psychic, very emotional. There is a lot of breakthroughs or perhaps also emotional breakdowns as well for some of us, but you know, it's almost like you're releasing your emotional baggages. So it can reveal the truth. It can reveal secrets coming up from nowhere. You know, like the moon, as I said, it's the public. So it could actually reveal some secret and the public going to uh, learn about uh, something what was hidden from us. Uh, the eclipse is usually going to push up uh, and push push us to to reach our destiny, and it's something uh, like pushing us to reach our purpose in life. So if you were stagnated in a situation, you didn't know what and how to decide and where to go. This eclipse, without any kind of um, regret, you know, it's going to push you. It's giving you that kind of push when you have no way to, to actually um, uh, do anything else but change. So, for example, eclipses can bring in, uh, you know, relationship issues or your work. It depends which area of your life going to happen. It could end a job. It could end a relationship. It could uh, make you to move somewhere in a foreign country. But it's a sudden change over here. So... Um, for the Libra uh, part of that eclipse is, you know, the Libra rules 7,000, it's ruled by Venus uh, at nighttime. And Libra is rules legal matters, uh, relationship, business partnership, uh, your significant other. And actually, it's also rules your client uh, from business. So if you have a, a YouTube channel, a private business, um, Libra rules that client us as well. So definitely during this eclipse, you're going to have a quest for harmony. You're going to question things like, okay, am I on the right path? Is this business partner good for me? Should I get married with this uh, person or elope uh, my wedding? Or maybe actually just be a runaway bride over here and I don't want to get married anymore. And, you know, because of Libra is also, uh, and it's symbolized by the scale, so it's trying to, have fairness and, and equality. So there is in this eclipse, which is going to influ influence the justice system and um, the fairness for each others here. So perhaps we're going to seek for, for justice in general for the public and we're going to, to seek for, for, you know, fairness and equality in our life. And, you know, because of Libra also rules, aesthetic and uh, uh, beauty products, clothing, uh, anything to do with fashion. So this eclipse could actually eclipse out something which we don't want to, to belong, not belong from, but, you know, relate from. So you can actually give up some kind of sur surroundings or, you know, maybe there is some kind of luxurious item you want to actually donate during this eclipse because of it's not um, it's not who you are anymore and it doesn't uh, uh, serve your purpose anymore. So you are like, all right, you know, but I don't need that. Either I'm going to sell it and keep the money and, and have then some some other things to invest in, or actually I just going to donate that. Um, you know, this eclipse also going to help you if you have to confront someone, you know, because if you want to reach harmony, you want to reach uh, peace in your, in your relationship, in your partnership. So if you must, 
And if you must confront this actor is going to help you with that. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned that, but the eclipse is going to actually happen in five degrees of Libra, and it's going to sextile with um, um, exalted Pisces, uh, exalted Venus in Pisces, because of, uh, oh no, it's not. Let me check, wait. No, so the, the eclipse is going to happen in Libra. But then during this eclipse, we're going to have Jupiter in Taurus sextile exalted Venus in Pisces. Yes, that's what's going to happen. All right. And let me see uh, the Sabian symbol actually of the five degrees of Libra over here. All right. So the Sabian symbol is a man watches his ideas taking a concrete form before his inner vision coupled with the influence of the fixed star Zania over here and Zania is in the constellation of Virgo it's going to and you know the 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 meaning of Zania is a corner or left low administrator and uh, Ptolemy said it's the nature of Mercury and Venus but Alvida said it's the nature of Venus and Mercury sextile. So actually, Zania is a really, really amazing fixed star over here. And um, yes, it's in five degrees of Libra. But of course, when you are looking up at the, for the constellation, you know, because of it, the constellation is Vedic, then it's going to happen in Virgo, right? And um, yes, yeah, so... So what's going to happen with this fixed star and with the man watches his ideas taking a concrete from before his inner vision, the Sabian symbol over here. So we can actually, it can indicate some kind of amazing opportunity and diplomacy in, in foreign relationship. If we going to check the mundane perspective of this aspect, um, you know, it could Actually, it could highlight um, the things with, with negotiating for peace or, or actually trying to have a um, uh, protest, but peaceful protest for peace during this eclipse. Because we want to restore peace and we want to restore harmony. And because of Venus and Mercury, sextile by Alvidas and Mercury-Venus kind of nature by Ptolemy, uh, that's Dania, where the eclipse is going to happen. This is Mercury speaking, Venus for peace. So that's the literal interpretation of that. Okay, so adjustment, adjustment for peace and harmony. Uh, getting social justice for things what was people who were wrongfully treated, people who, you know, the genocide that's going on in Palestine or, or, uh, anything like that, it could bring in some kind of issues with um, with Israel. For example, Israel has a Libra rising, and uh, because of the eclipse going to happen in uh, Israel um, rising sign, and on this could actually bring in like, all right, maybe uh, it's going to affect the the leader of Israel, and if they are capable to get rid of him then peace going to be negotiable. So it could bring that. But, you know, there is also because of Venus is involved in this, because of um, the, the um, fixed star um, on five degrees Libra, right? It's a Venetian aspect over there, plus Ribla uh, ruled by Venus, and Venus right now is in Pisces in exalted VIP position. So Venus is improved, uh, uh, involved here, and it is sextiling with Jupiter. Jupiter is justice and court system, and uh, Venus in Pisces is very compassionate. So it's going to also focus on mental health awareness as well. So we will see the physical issues and the physical well-being are really directed and based on your mental health. And right now they're going to do a lot of integrative uh, medicine and they're going to try to focus on the spirit, the body and the brain as well. So, you know, 
uh, refinement in healthcare because the Naya influence suggests enhancement in healthcare practices. As, as I said before, Mercury is like hiring more people and Venus over there, you know, like, like integrating technology and human care together. And this Zanaya actually could bring in something which is patient-centered approaches. So I really love that it's going to happen on this beautiful fixed star. And on the educational level, there is some kind of innovative learning method that is going to come in. The eclipse can catalyze something, as I said. The adoption of more balanced and harmonious educational system that cater to intellectual and emotional intelligence, reflecting Venus and Mercury qualities. Zanaya is, as we said, Venus and Mercury qualities. And arts and humanities, you know, like as I said, Art is very, very improve, um, important. Imagination is, is the most important thing uh, because that's how we can succeed. Uh, also, Einstein said imagination is more important than, than your IQ. And uh, if we are going to bring in art in education, uh, it could actually increase um, your, your intellect. And, and you know... During this time right now, the full moon eclipse, uh, you know, after when we're going to get into uh, Pisces and uh, what is the other Virgo eclipses, but it's going to happen in 2025. So for this year still, it's going to be uh, something with the relationship and art because Venus representing art. We're going to actually appreciate music and art more than before. Uh, which I really like because both of my children are really artsy. They Taurus children and they actually ruled by Venus. So as my husband Taurus rising, so and and he is an amazing photographer. So yes, that that's what I really appreciate. That like art going to be very very important. Um, and you know Libra is balancing out something, so it could also help to balance the climate, something with the wedding condition, we might going to uh, have some kind of unexpected shift over here, some sudden shift over here, you know, the moon is water, so I do uh, expect uh, something like it's going to be either harder to get clean water, but you know, you we going to actually try to, to have uh, water out from ocean water, but definitely this eclipse is going to bring in the problem with drinking water, and then we're going to solve it. There has to be always a problem to be capable to grow from it and, you know, uh, and move forward and solve the issues. Um, and, you know, it could end some kind of conflict because don't forget Jupiter and Venus sextile. As I said, Jupiter is law and justice, Venus is peace. And the eclipse is in Libra, so something with diplomacy, alliances, you know, between countries. So there is definitely some kind of effort over there to resolve conflicts. Um, and there is a breakthrough, some kind of new ideas, which is bringing in justice and fairness. Uh, I do love that. <clears throat> and, you know, during this eclipse, because of Libra is... Uh, uh, anything to do with partnership, but the full moon eclipse is ending. We're going to see regrouping alliances. So, for example, as I said before, you know, it's going to happen on Israel um, ascendant. So, you know, Israel going to lose supporters, for example, and people going to, I mean, countries going to regroup. Whoever supported someone before, they might not going to be uh, and align with the same principles and values and ideas anymore, right? And if you are checking finances, you know, so Libra ruled by Venus. Venus is also um, a currency as well, not just beauty and love. So it does affect the financial market. But, you know, Venus and Jupiter over here going to sextile and Jupiter is the riches. Jupiter is abundance. So actually it's going to uh, create a bullish uh, market. And, you know, because of moon rules real estate, right? It rules your home, your real estate. Uh, so this eclipse actually 
could bring in some kind of change in the real estate market. And because it's an eclipse, it's eclipsing out something. So might be changing and move toward to more balanced and ethical uh, real estate market. Or maybe the APR, the, the, the rates going to go down, you know, like, but we are getting rid of a burden here with this real estate. And um, what else? Let me see. Hmm. Yeah, definitely we're going to, to seek for, for harmony and real estate is changing, as I said. Um, global peace, at least, um, at least trying to, to have some kind of um, justice or, you know, because of Jupiter is coexist with Uranus, Uranus is social unrest and the sextile between B Venus and uh, Jupiter, but energy wise, it's between Venus and Uranus as well. Vedic astrology only sees, but always sees the energy as well. And if I check on that, Yes, it could actually bring in some kind of uh, social endless unrest for the peace, but you know, it's going to be peaceful. It's not going to be right now yet, but April, it's a totally different thing. So I'm going to talk about that later because there is a lot of unrest, unfortunately. All right. So yes, so that is something with uh, drinking water, you know, it's eclipsing out. So some people are not going to, to be capable to drink water. Somehow it's happening. And uh, yeah, so things like that. Okay, guys, let me see what else I can say to you. Uh, let's see. So we're going to have no, I'm going to talk about each individual science right now. Just let me get my little um, wheel, but I'm okay. Let me see. All right, Aries rising, sun and moon. Um, it's gonna happen in your seventh house, and seventh house is your relationship. It's across you, right? So, so if you are watching that for your rising, that's the <coughs> most accurate. If you are watching that for your son, that's your father figure, your career, um, you know, your moon is your mother figure, your emotion, your home situation. Uh, okay, so so it's in your seventh house. Seventh house, anything to do with partnership, legal matters, client relationship, and significant others. This is a fated turning point over here. It is profound. It is some kind of commitment or some kind of realization to part ways or to renew the relationship but in a totally different way so you don't have to divorce your partner or get rid of your business partner but the way it was before it's not working and it has to be reborn to continue so all right what else could happen if you have a business partner so there could be some kind of reassessment in business partnership. Maybe you are not seeing eye to eye in some kind of project and uh, you need to have some kind of confrontation with your business partner because or at negotiation to reach the peak over here with, with your project. So yeah. Legal matters, so you know what, if you do have a legal matters, legal issue, it could actually end the negotiation and actually it could turn, you get rid of somebody who is suing you, for example. So actually it could turn out well. Uh, a personal matter might become public, require, going to require some kind of diplomatic handling. You know, maybe you have to to hire a mediator or you have to hire an attorney. You know, that is between self and others, because areas, me, it is against me against we. So the confrontation is between like, I need to take care of myself. And because of the we, my partnership taking a lot of energy, and I might have to let go of something about this partnership, because otherwise I cannot give myself self-care. 
So yes, that is the me against me over here. Uh, urging you to, to compromise or not to compromise. All right, or maybe compromise for your partner. All right, Taurus rising, sun and moon. Let me turn my wheel. It's going to happen in your sixth house. And sixth house is your work, health. It's anything to do with your rental properties, anything to do with service for others. It is also your, your yoga studio, juice bar, your gym membership, and your pet your dog perhaps and because of the moon representing dog itself you know some of you might going to to lose a, a, an animal unfortunately but it could be also like i'm losing a job i'm giving up a job because it's not working for me anymore i'm firing my employee i could fire my tenant or i'm ending my tenancy because of it's not healthy for me I'm ending my work because I work so much hours and I will have a better opportunity to make money easier way. So this is a critical point and it's very necessary because otherwise you are very uh, maybe lazy and you don't want to make a change, but you will be pushed to make a change. Your daily routine also going to actually change and it's going to be sudden because you're going to recognize something about your health and because of your health going to need immediate, um, uh, you know, like healing, you're going to immediately suddenly change the routines. You're not going to eat what you ate before, you know, like you're going to go gluten free or something like that, or start to go to, to um, what is that sweating lodge and, and, you know, sweat out all the toxins. If you have pet, there is a lot of attention and responsibilities related to your pets, as I said. So it could be some issue arising. And yes, co-workers, uh, you know, the dynamic within a team could, could be difficult, actually, in, in at your work. And, uh, you know, you might going to give up the gym membership because you have to move and you are just like, all right, I'm not doing that anymore. And then... We're going to have Gemini rising sun and moon, all right? Uh, it's going to happen in your fifth house of creativity, romance, and investment, luck, lottery winning, okay? And children. So this is, you know, like it could be like you're going to have an empty nest. Your child is, is uh, ready to go to university and, and, you know, within half a year, going to have an emptiness also a romantic relationship could come to a crucial phase and and you can you know and maybe maybe you have a mistress and you want to keep your marriage and you're going to give up this this uh, this phase in your life and there is also a creative project what uh, you worked on and it could come to fruition so it doesn't have to end uh, on a bad way for example your romantic relationship might gonna end because you want to propose for the uh, man or woman in your life and then it's gonna become a marriage and obviously so the the stage as it was before ending and if you have children there could come some kind of adjustment with your children you know so it, they can leave the house but also the, or the boarding school you can put them in or you know they can also experience some kind of creative project is coming to their end. If they are in sport activity, because fifth has anything to do with sport activities as well, like, you know, like some kind of joyous activity, then they might go into change team. So it could happen over there. Um, well, you know, this... This eclipse, because it's full moon, so the sun is in your 11th house, so pleasure, um, uh, BS uh, responsibility over here, so it's 11th house of matter, so community, that is where you're going to shine, but you know, you have to give up some kind of hobby or passion because of you have to take on some kind of serious commitment and it could be demanding in a community, in your tribe. Um, if you are doing speculation businesses and taking a high risk, please be careful because it could be a damage over here, a major, major damage over here. Let me plug in my 
uh, uh, my computer because I'm running low. All right, let me see. All right, so yes, self-expression is really, really um, uh, important for you, Gemini, rising sun and moon. Um, but, you know, to express yourself through some kind of performance and art, because fifth house representing art. All right, Cancer rising sun and moon for you, it's going to happen in your fourth house, home, family, real estate, roots, anything to do with ending changes or, uh, yeah, changes uh, going to happen in your living situation and in your family dynamic. Uh, you can actually move or maybe you need to renovate your house because it's in a critical stage and, you know, you have to renovate and until then you have to go to a rental house. There is also, because of the fourth house is your emotional foundation as well, because that's your roots and your family and, you know, the moon is your emotion and very deeply emotional. So it could be some kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, you want to create some kind of security for your family. And there is some kind of uh, um, urge to create security for your family and, and the emotional foundation as well. And you might going to also discover something with your family history or ancestry. Um, it could be related to your, your father's, mother's finding your biological, you know, peers over here. It could represent that, yes. Or actually, this is a full moon eclipse in the fourth house. It could represent like you are selling your house, you are moving, or because of fourth house also ending and funerals, it could actually end the life of a nurturing uh, authority figure. So if your father was the nurturing one, it could end the father's life. If your mother was more nurturing, it could end the life of a mother, obviously not for everyone. But, you know, there is definitely uh, finalizing something with property-related matters. You can buy or sell a, a home. Um, there is also your inner self uh, is very, very important during your, your this eclipse. Uh, you're going to find some space or maybe you're creating a beautiful space for meditation in your home. All right, Leo rising, sun and moon, what's going to happen for you here? It's going to happen in your third house, moving the chart. Okay, it's going to happen in communication, learning, and anything with your, your uh, nearby community, neighborhood, uh, with your younger siblings. It could be short distance traveling, nieces, nephews, uncles, and aunts. Uh, so, all right, there is... Uh, a significant news or a decision might alter your immediate plans here with this kind of eclipse. So, you know, you have a project which was maybe a, a project with communication. Maybe you were writing a book and it came to the end and you are ready to publish. Or maybe you're going to move from your neighborhood because of your neighborhood is not satisfying you for you anymore. Uh, it could also end a relationship with a neighbor or end a relationship with a sibling or uncle or aunt as well, because of if they are not respecting you, value you, then you are just going to walk away from these people or, you know, siblings as well, as I said before. So, you know, like, this eclipse is going to definitely demand attention toward your, your neighborhood issues or with your issues with your siblings. Short trip traveling, you know, if you would like to actually travel right now, it could uh, create a change in your travel plan because of this is an eclipse. So it might be like right now I'm not capable to do this, this uh, traveling because of... Uh, because I need to pay attention on my neighborhood, on my community, anything to do with my with my online school. So I'm building my online school and right now I have to give up traveling a little bit. Um, so turning point in speaking. So if you are actually invited to do TED Talks or you, know, you are doing speeches or you are a ghostwriter, 
or you are a writer, that's definitely an ending of that, but ending in a good way, like you finishing the project. Um, and, you know, this is the hose over here, which is going to, to you know, third hose, anything to do with your mental activity, the way you are processing information. So there could be something which is like, you will need to adjust something right now because of this full moon could create, like you have to let go the way you were learning in your childhood and you have to actually um, right now start something new, initiate something new, which is happening with your mental activity. Maybe you're going to third house also supplements, taking new supplements. All right. Virgo, rising sun and moon, it's going to happen in your second house. Second house is your values, that is your finances, that is the food, what you eat, that is your earning, okay? Your possession. So financial matters such as the culmination of a significant expense or investment might come to the forefront. So What's happening over here? You know, you invested in something and whatever you invested in, it not necessarily keeps the value. So you will have to make a decision either to sell it or maybe you're just going to need the money and it kept the value. Actually, it's even increased the value, but you will need to actually saw, sell something valuable, which could be an art or a gem or diamond or anything, jewelry, but because of you will need to invest in something else. Um, you can lo lose something. So careful with Venus could be like an, a wedding ring because of, you know, Libra is significant others. And because of the eclipse could eclipse out a wedding ring. So careful with your possession, uh, something valuable you get from someone who you love. Maybe you get it from a mother figure, you know, moon, but you can lose that. Um um, you know, your income and your possession going to get some kind of uh, new adjustment here because of you might going to have to let go of an income, but because of if it, the, the April eclipse, you will get in something, maybe an inheritance. It's going to happen in your eighth house, right? And uh, you're going to get some inheritance in and you can let go of... Uh, something that doesn't serve you anymore. And, you know, the second house also your values, your self-worth. So you can actually let go of something that, uh, that is like uh, sabotaging your self-confidence and uh, your self-worth, uh, some kind of uh, behavior or some kind of emotion, and you will feel more uh, value, valuable right now. And the second house also everything to do with tangible assets because it's rules, Taurus, and Taurus is a fixed earth sign and it's tangible, the second house. So, so, you know, if you would like to sell or buy something over here, even properties because of it's a moon, so it could be something with properties, it could be manageable, but you have to be careful with, you know, signing the contract because... Uh, the retrograde is coming up in areas and uh, Mercury is already in shadow. So, yeah. So, and also there is some kind of financial gain over here for you through, like you're going to recognize some kind of new talent for yourself. And through that new talent, what you're going to develop some kind of new skills, you are capable actually to profit and there is financial gain out from it. All right, Libra rising sun and moon is going to happen. It's a Libra eclipse, full moon eclipse in your first house of self and identity. Anything to do with your body, with your face, you know, like it's a personal transformation. This is a significant shift actually in your appearance with your self image and the way how others perceive you. That's very important as well. So you're going to rise some eyebrow here. You're going to change. Um, there is definitely a moment of personal uh, revolution here. Um, so anything what you started, and if it's a personal business, a project, you know, uh, it's going to have a critical turning point. Right now you will decide if you want to move with it, move forward with it, or give up on it and and you don't want to pay any more attention to that 
And, you know, because of the first host is your health and your physical body. So physical health is very, very important here. But, you know, this could be an amazing lifestyle, a lifestyle change, which is going to actually help you to get rid of some kind of physical, physical limitation, something, some kind of illness. Maybe you thought you are permanently ill from something and right now you're just capable to get rid of that. It is bringing in independence because you're letting go of some kind of um, burden. And, and and the burden is going to, because you're letting it go, like, you know, like like it's going to make you, uh, give you freedom and, and you're going to be really independent here. It's a new beginning. It's something new starting in your life and you're going to be become more vital and, and, you know, happiness as well. But you have to leave some kind of self-sabotaging behavior behind. I did Libra. Okay. Scorpio rising, sun and moon, it's going to happen in your 12th house. And 12th house, anything to do with your subconscious, with your spirituality, with the underprivileged. It is hospice, hospitals, jail, orphanages, it hotels as well, Airbnb, faraway countries, it's a retreat, it's a movie script writing. Uh, photography and art so that is definitely you might have actually uh, finished that project with art you finished your movie script writing or you are finishing a photographic project and you're ready actually to show that for the public and you're gonna have a show uh, but that is also amazing this eclipse actually helping you to get rid of some kind of addiction and and self sabotaging behavior so you're going to get some kind of profound personal insight you're going to be very psychic and your dream going to become really vivid you might going to uh, find some kind of solitude in meditation you have to let go of everything that burdens you. It is a new chapter in your life. It is a closure. But I said, you're leaving everything in the closet. What was in the closet, you're leaving behind. And, you know, because it's an eclipse, it could eclipse out a secret. Uh, 12 houses, gossip, secrets, and secret enemies. So definitely it could uh, bring um, out some kind of information about your, your hidden enemies. And you're going to be actually, uh, um, you know, re um, feel some kind of relief to knowing uh, you had hidden enemies who were sabotaging and you are not crazy and thanks God right now you can face. If you know your enemies, you can face it. If it's hidden, you don't know what are you fighting with and who are you fighting with. So I always like to face my enemies and, you know, like destroy them. So spiritual practice, 12 holes is anything to do with spiritual practice. You might go into go some retreat, anything to do. Maybe you're going to find a new spiritual teacher. Maybe you're going to start to teach something. But there is a lot of emotional healing going on for you. And it could actually heal childhood traumas or hidden traumas that you didn't know about. Okay. And, you know... It could be like some of you listening me and maybe you guys were sex trafficked somehow and you have right now the opportunity to listen and you are actually capable to 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 hear from that and and actually leaving your captivator somehow. That's what I see, leaving behind something what was or maybe you you getting out from jail, some of you, or maybe you're getting out from hospice and you you healed. All right, Sagittarius rising sun and moon, which is me as well. If you know me, you know I'm a Sag rising. It's going to happen in our 11th house, Libra. 11th house, anything to do with our social circle, with our friendship zone, with our hopes and wishes. And, you know, money from our career. So, yeah, so, you know, like it could be a little bit tough for us because... Uh, we might going to let go of a social circle or some friendship that doesn't serve us anymore. You know, they have to go. Unfortunately, it could take away with that a friend as well. Uh, you know, obviously, there is a lot of Sagittarius rising out there. It's not going to happen with all of us. But for some, uh, it could actually end a, 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 invest a, job, a money from your career 
So somehow you are finding a new way to make money, perhaps, or you are letting go of some kind of social environment and events that doesn't serve you anymore. You don't feel you belong from that anymore. If you pay, pay the high price for some kind of social club and you think like they are really snobbish, you are like, all right, I'm done over here. All right, I can't listen to this uh, Facebook group anymore because it's too much disaster. So I'm letting them go. Um, but, um, you know, this is anything to do with so a community and, and group activities. So after that, you let go of whatever doesn't serve you anymore. You're going to ca be capable to, to actually increase your involvement in other things that you really like. And, you know, your long-term goals, you don't have to let it go, but you have to reevaluate. You have to change it to be able to work for you or, or bring profits for you. So something has to change over there with your dreams and goals. And that's for you going to increase your profit. Uh, there is, you know, 11th house also networking. Uh, there could be some kind of new connection coming in with this eclipse as well. But also, as I said, only the new is capable to get into our life when we let go of something that is burdening us. So let go of those who are really taking your energy and doesn't take you anywhere. Um, your vision is changing. Like and it's going to be uh, drastical and very dramatic. It's, it's like, it's like, all right. I have never thought I'm going to do something like that before, but with this full moon, I'm going to get an insight and my whole entire dream and vision and, and you know, uh, vision for the future going to to become new. And I'm gonna get more aspiration right now. Okay, Capricorn rising sun and moon, it's going to happen in your 10th house and it's going to happen in your career, public images, anything to do with uh, honor, recognition, uh, anything to do with your, your uh, you know, like public image. Um, there could be some kind of uh, milestone and a major significant shift in your professional life. So you might go into actually end a career and start something new. Uh, if you were running for office, maybe you just want to give it up right now and you have enough and you say, I have enough from politics and I don't want to do that anymore. I need to change over here. Um, there could be also some kind of public recognition, but it could be some kind of infamous. So careful with that because it's a lunar eclipse activity here. And um, if you are, you know, 10th house also authority figures as well. So there could be like you are losing a parent or an authority figure or 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 your, your attorney um, can, or your professor can, either die or you are losing connection with them with them or interaction with them so that could be that as well or you know what actually the 10th house is also political party so you might actually change your political party right now because of you feel like you don't belong whatever wherever you belong from before definitely the courier is going to get a new life direction and you're going to have um, some new true ambition and it's going to align with your your path, with your with your purpose. And because tenth house also responsibilities, because it's ruled by Saturn, right, Capricorns? You are ruled by Saturn, so there is a lot of professional duties which is going to have to be reassessed and balanced out because it's a Libra eclipse, so it needs some balancing here. And your public role and public status also in, you know, like if you are actually leading a community or leading or you are a CEO over here or you are willing to become a CEO, your status could change. Actually, it could uh, end the status. So if some of you were married, it could end the relationship and you are not uh, uh, married anymore. So that's a status also over there. All right. Aquarius rising sun and moon, it's going to happen in your ninth house. 
Right? It has anything to do with foreign matters, anything to do with beliefs, with traveling, with your older sibling, long distance traveling, aviation. Um, uh, yes, older siblings, I mentioned that. So, you know, philosophical or ethical uh, changes going to, and actually the change going to be challenging as well and your worldview going to change. So you're not going to believe in what you believed in before. Or if you uh, did a trip in a foreign country and you went back all the time over there, or you wanted to have a, a citizenship over there, you don't want to have it anymore. Or it could also bring in like, okay, you had some kind of issues with immigration and it's coming to an end. Either or, but it's coming to an end. Uh, completion, you know, you can complete some kind of higher education, higher study, because ninth house also a university degree. So you might going to get your doctorate, your, your master degrees. Uh, you can actually uh, end a second relationship and a second marriage, but definitely some kind of engagement with new beliefs and perhaps even new university as well. Um, you know, if you would like to go abroad right now, if you are traveling abroad, the way you are looking at the foreign country going to change your whole belief system and perspective on the world. And because of the ninth house is ruled by Jupiter and Jupiter is legal matters, right? Anything to do with legal matters, higher education, with publishing. Ninth house also podcast, podcast, YouTube being publishing. Um, so actually it could um, finally come to a term where, like you are publishing your book or or, you know, like you sign the contract with that TV series and it's going to become a series and you're going to, to, to be happy about that. Or it's going to come to the end. You know, if you already were an actor or actress uh, in a series, right now it's not, not more, um, uh, you know, like a part of the series anymore. Um, you know, and, and the ninth house is higher education, but it's teaching because it's ruled Sagittarius and Jupiter is teaching as a teacher. Jupiter is, knows everything he thinks. Uh, so you can actually start some, and you can have new opportunities in mentoring and anything what is knowledge-based, high education-based, so you can get an opportunity. All right, and last but not least, my beautiful mystic Pisces. Uh, and I'm a Pisces sun myself. So, you know, it's going to happen, Pisces rising in your eighth house. But you are, if you are watching that for your sun or moon, uh, the sun is your father and your uh, career and the moon is your mother and your emotions. All right. So eighth house, transformation, shared resources, taboos, intimacy, abortion, tax, um, um what is that? Medical mere practice issues, uh, prenups, uh, insurance money, financial matters, which is going to involve, for example, that. So you know what? You might actually pay off a debt and you have no more debts. Or, you know, it could be like your inheritance. You, you were working for your inheritance because someone passed away. And right now you are selling that property and you're getting rid of everything with that inheritance going to involve and because of the moon is property itself it's housing it could be that as well or you know you are signing a prenup maybe a shared resources and and you signing like yes that's house in a case of divorce gonna belong from me something like with with justice right something with eight house matters but but financial matters which is bringing in profound uh, transformation in your financial area and, you know, intimacy, because it rules sex as well, and death as well. So intimacy over here going to go under a huge change. So there is a deeper connection between you and your significant other. It is like very, very deep uh, trust between you two. Um, so that would be also like you going to actually hire a sex therapist or a psychologist to to. Um, uh, save your relationship. Uh, that would be like, because of its psychology, the eighth house as well, definitely you are hiring a mediator or a shrink for yourself, or you can actually um, have some kind of psychic insight right now uh, and 
because it was is very psychic and the moon itself it's uh, it's emotions and uh, psychic ability as well so definitely and because it's a full moon obviously you will have more psychic ability as well uh, you can start to actually start your own practice if you are a psychologist and go on your own practice right now and if you want to actually source some kind of things, you can open up a private detective office um, and solve some kind of hidden mysteries um, as well, hidden murder cases, or you can become a um, astrologer, uh, the forensic astrologer. Uh, you can find out who was the, the identity thief, you know, if you had something cracked up, you know, like your identity was lost. Or, you know, unfortunately, because it's the house of death and also pregnancy, some of you guys can lose a pregnancy, unfortunately, as well, because it's an ending. But, you know, it's not necessarily that, you know, it could end up like, for example, you're pregnant and you ending up in C-section because eighth house ruled by Pluto, Pluto and Mars, which is surgery and cut. So it could be like, yes, it could uh, be a C-section as well. All right, guys, if you loved my videos uh, and this podcast, please subscribe, like, comment below, check out my website. I'm really, really good with readings and I'm giving you a lot of information, not necessarily sugar-coated, but if you want me to, I can be, obviously, so I would like to read you and I really appreciate your trust to be here with me. Um, and I'm going to come up with other videos. Thank you so much for listening and see you soon. Bye for now.